about the Rolex Sydney to Hobart race. The race is tough. It's about five races in one. The preparation is everything about this race. I'm nervous is an understatement. It's just the ocean race that everyone wants to do. I don't know what else you'd do at Christmas time, I must say. Christmas, and Sydney is the only place to be. Every year, this stunning Australian city plays host to one of the world's greatest sailing contests, the Rolex Sydney Hobart Yacht Race. In recent years, the arrival of the Supermaxes in the Rolex Sydney Hobart fleet has helped to modernise this classic race, pushing design, technology and records in the process. Wild Oats 11, Leopard, Maximus and Scandia have been competing in regattas around the world, wowing audiences as they go. This year, the rivalry between these beasts is stronger than ever. Brit Mike Slade launched his new maxi, Leopard, earlier this year and has already had success on the circuit. Maximus and Scandia have been plagued with breakages in the past, but shouldn't be underestimated. But the real one to watch is Wild Oats 11, skippered by Australian Mark Richards. This boat and team have twice before won the coveted Line Honours title in this event and currently hold the race record. If they can win again this year, they'll be the first yacht to do so in 60 years. This year's race could be history in the making. The Cruising Yacht Club of Australia once again plays host and organiser of the Rolex Sydney Hobart Yacht Race. A week before the start, and the CYCA welcomes the skippers to this year's event and the annual Ocean Racer of the Year Awards, hosted by Commodore of the Club, Matt Allen. <laughs> Allen has only been Commodore of the CYCA for five months and is about to embark on his busiest week of the year. Being Commodore is, is quite easy. There's a lot of work to do um, at the back end of the year when it's coming into Boxing Day. It, it's always a lot of fun. I, I actually really enjoy it. It holds a, a, a unique position as being the leading club in ocean racing. And as the club and the race grows into its 64th year, you know, it's important that we continue to remember the achievements of the past. The CYCA has hosted the Sydney Hobart Yacht Race since its conception in 1945. It's become one of the world's most prestigious ocean classics. It's a contest of courage and seamanship man against the elements. This race is tough, but regularly attracts some of the world's most talented sailors, who return to the competition year after year to sail the famous race course. Matt Allen is no exception. Juggling his business and personal life is key to his sailing success. He finished second in this race last year. There's a lot of similarities between business and yachting in the sense that you're actually trying to put good people around you um, and then manage them. And that's really the ingredients for, for success. You can be really anywhere in the world as long as you've got a mobile phone and a laptop. Really, it doesn't matter where you are. Um, you can continue to run your business and, and, and balance your yachting as well as your family. And because I walk, work from home, it all sort of works quite nicely. One of Alan's rivals on this year's race course is the charismatic Englishman, Mike Slade. Isn't lovely? The owner of City Index Leopard, this is the third time Slade has competed in this race, travelling halfway round the world to put his 30-metre Super Maxi on the start line as well as hosting friends and family on board this luxury racer. It's an expensive thing to ship a boat this size down here. 26 crew living down here, wives, kids, look at them all. 
Whilst social time is important to Slade and his crew, they are also serious racers, already having claimed the 2007 Rolex Fastnet title. Slade would love to add the Sydney Hobart silverware to his trophy cabinet. It's there to be done if you can do it, if you could get the record of both in one year, that would be quite something special. Sydney Hope, I've done two already, I'd love to win it. Uh, it is the iconic ocean race. I think it's, this is the number one ocean race. Seriously, it is. One thing is for sure, on start day, the socializing will be over and the crew of Leopard will have their minds on the job. It's standing room only for skippers and crew at the final weather briefing. The forecast is for strong tailwinds at the start, replaced by a weak southerly change down the New South Wales coast. Not the news Mark Richards and Mike Slade want to hear. It's going to be a very tricky race out there, and I think that the, uh, you know, everyone's going to have to work very hard and technically and um, keep their wits about them, and any, anything could happen. I could prefer different weather patterns or forecasts than I'm seeing right now, to be perfectly honest. On the opposite side of the Sydney Harbour at Woolwich Dock, Leopard and Wild Oats are moored together away from the rest of the fleet due to their size. Despite the light forecast, the preparations for these racing machines are meticulous as ever. And being just a matter of hours away from the start, the tension is mounting. The rivalry between these two is greater than ever. As far as we're going in a straight line in the right direction, we're going to get there. Back at the CYCA, the rest of the fleet undergo their final checks. This race is not just about the big boats. Anyone in the fleet has a chance at winning the handicap trophy, the Tattersall's Cup, and most will do anything they can to get their hands on it. Even though benign conditions are forecast, no stone is left unturned. And for Matt Allen, with all Commodore tasks completed, it's time to get into skipper mode. <laughs> Hundreds of thousands of spectators await the 82-strong fleet as they head out into Sydney Harbour. This Boxing Day spectacular has become a yearly ritual for racing fanatics. Every vantage point is claimed for a grandstand view of one of the world's most famous start lines as the crews run through their final preparations. Weeks of planning and practice are about to be put to the test. The pressure is on. As the countdown begins, nerves are high. Only five minutes till the off. This 628-mile course takes the fleet out of Sydney Harbour, south and across Bass Strait, then down the east coast of Tasmania before making their way up the Dermot River to the finish line in Hobart. The clock is ticking. The fleet jostle for the favoured spot on the start line. Timing is crucial. A slight error at this stage could be catastrophic. All eyes focus on that line. Every inch of water is hotly contested. As the clock runs out, it's full speed ahead. At one o'clock sharp, the crack of the cannon fire signals the start of the 63rd edition of the race. The 82-strong fleet is on its way to Hobart. With so many competitors, the yachts are split across two start lines, the smaller boats following the larger ones. True to form, it's Wild Oats 11 who obtains the best start. Taking advantage of the pin-end bias, she flies off the line at full speed. 
She coasts her way along the exclusion boundary, giving the spectators a thrill. City Index Leopard sits to weather of them. It's neck and neck for these two. Minutes into the race, Wild Oats is forced to tack. All eyes are on the cross. Mark Richards steers Wild Oats carefully across Leopard's bow. Precision is paramount. A small misjudgment could cause major damage. Wild Oats is clear. Maneuvering a 30-meter super maxi is nerve-wracking for even the most experienced sailor. With power and speed at the push of a button, these boats must be handled with kit gloves, even in the light conditions. Off the water, back at the dock, keel problems for the super maxi Maximus have forced them to pull out of the race. All this team can do is watch from the shore. Back on the water, and as the boats make their way out of Sydney Harbour, the competition is already fierce. This huge fleet weaving in and out of each other. As expected, the two Super Maxis, Wild Oats 11 and Leopard, lead the charge. Both look even at this stage. Leopard tacks first for the turning mark. Wild Oats holds off until they can place themselves into an attacking position. As they make their way through Sydney Heads, Wild Oats manages to pull away from the other Maxis. A good start for this team. The rest of the fleet follow. Matt Allen's Ichiban struggles in the light air. This beamy boat prefers heavier conditions, but there is still a lot of racing to be sailed. Hotly pursued by the hordes of spectators, Wild Oats charges through the whirlpool. Followed by Leopard under Jenica. As the fleet leaves Sydney with the open sea ahead of them, on board Yendes, one of the handicapped favorites, navigator Will Oxley checks the latest satellite data. The key role of the navigator really is to position the boat to make the best use of the, both the, the prevailing currents and winds and also what to position yourself to take advantage of what you expect to happen. The, the computer models are only as good as the, the computer and the data that, that go into them. Invariably they underestimate the strength of the wind in Bass Strait and the funneling effect and so uh, it may show a, a, a light breeze but because of uh, where you are, you know that you're going to expect it to be quite a bit stronger. Just hours after the start, and the Rolex Sydney Hobart fleet is flying south down the New South Wales coast under spinnakers. The perfect northerly wind is propelling the boats nicely towards Hobart. At the front of the fleet, Wild Oats is reveling in the champagne sailing conditions just managing to hold off the might of the opposition. The lightweight Super Maxi is well suited to this type of sailing. Leopard is hot on their heels, and despite being a heavier yacht, is keeping up well. With the racing so tight, the pressure is on. There's no time to sit back and relax. Concentration and strategy are the name of the game. So we're all looking at each other, we're all in view of each other, we're all on and we go into the first night.
As day turns into night, there is no easing up. The front runners reach blistering speeds in excess of 20 knots. That's right, folks. 24 knots. Whilst it's time for the rest of Australia to sleep, for the Hobart fleet, the work goes on despite the time of day. Day two, and after a fast night of sailing, the predicted southerly change comes into play. As yet it remains strong, carrying the fleet safely across Bass Strait, the stretch of water notorious for carnage. For this edition of the race, Mother Nature is being kinder than usual, although for the smaller boats in the fleet, Bass Strait is always a test. At this stage in the race, Rosebud is the only boat to be close to the Super Maxis. And with her highly experienced crew, She's tipped to be the overall winner of this year's race. Having travelled all the way from America, owner Roger Sturgeon and his team will be pushing till the end. Rosebud is a STP-65, which is very much like a TP-52, which everyone knows so well from the Med Cup circuit, but it's on steroids. It's uh, obviously longer, it's uh, got more sail area to weight ratio, it's a more powerful boat, and it's an exciting boat. We feel good about the boat, and we feel good about our chances. And uh, if we get the right weather, we'll be there at the finish. Beautiful morning here in Tasmania. As the sun comes up on day three, it's Wild Oats 11 that is first to set eyes on the Tasmanian coastline. The wind has been playing tricks on the race crew throughout the night, and it's not letting up now. Swinging and fluctuating in speed, has put the race crew through plenty of tiring sail changes, all in the name of boat speed. This Australian crew have held on to the lead since the start, but have been constantly looking over their shoulder at Leopard. Slade and his crew aren't far behind. Just 11 nautical miles the delta as they reach the stunning sight of the organ pipes at Cape Rowell. And as the race draws into its latter stages in terms of mileage, the British know there's still plenty of time to attack. But with the wind pressure easing, keeping the momentum going is crucial to ticking off the miles if they're to catch wild oats. You've got to be concerned about getting around the organ pipes and this next head that's going lighter on us. It's the dangerous part of the race where we can fall down badly. So we've got to concentrate very hard, sail changes, work hard, work the shift. So uh, it's all to play for right now. But it's not such plain sailing for the third Super Maxi, Scandia. They're out of the running after the top section of their mast broke during the night. The huge spinnaker flogged during a broach, causing the top third of the mast to snap. Although out of the race for line honours, skipper Grant Warrington is determined to complete the course, albeit in a handicapped mode. Rosebud is still hanging on to the Supermaxes, being the next boat in the fleet to reach the organ pipes. Having such high caliber sailors on board is paying off. Early morning at Constitution Dock in Hobart. A welcoming sight for all competitors in the race. Up the Derwent River, the heat is on. For the third time in this race, Wild Oats 11 has been parked in light, fickle winds. Their lead has dwindled to just three miles over Leopard in the final stages of the race. The Derwent River is always a tricky sailing ground, and 
this year, it's no different. Can Mark Richards and his Aussie crew hold off Mike Slade and the Brits, who found the wind and are charging from behind? Finally, the morning breeze begins to build. Hobart is just a stone's throw away. The Tasmanian spectators venture out onto the Derwent to welcome home the race leaders. And after one day, 18 hours and 40 minutes, Wild Oats 11 crosses the finish line. Taking line honours for a third year in a row. An historic achievement for Mark Richards and his crew. Words can't explain it, just a sensational feeling. As you saw coming out of the Derwent, it's probably the most challenging Derwent entry ever. But, um, you know, the boys did a fantastic job. The boat performed fantastically and uh, here we are in Hobart again for the third time. Mike Slade's City Index Leopard isn't far behind. After sailing a tactically smart race to close the gap on the race leaders, Leopard finally finishes just 27 minutes after Wild Oats. Close, but not close enough for Slade. I let, I let you guys do that, you know that, don't you? Congratulations. God, it's hard coming in second. Oh, yeah. It was difficult, difficult conditions. We pulled back, I think, 20 miles on them in the last six hours. And I, I was thinking they were wounded in some way or other because we were watching them struggle getting up here. And you just close and close it. It's so quick, you can change these things so quickly. With line honours secured, back out on the course, all focus turns to the Tattersall's Cup for the corrected time leader. The Americans on board Rosebud are still strong contenders. And as they make their way slowly up the Dermot River, they know it's just them against the clock. Finally, they cross the Hobart finish line and have done just enough to claim the title. A great accomplishment for the team. Well, I was pretty well prepared. The whole team was prepared before the race. But, uh, you know, you have your lulls and you have your highs and you're ready for all of them. you got to change gears. We must have done 100 sail changes. <laughs> OK. There's always something going on. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the bowman on Rosebud, Justin Cluett to accept the Tattersall's Cup and replica on behalf of Roger Sturgeon and the crew of Rosebud. 79 of the 82 strong fleet have made their way safely to Hobart, completing the course. Constitution Dock providing the perfect setting to rest, relax and dry out. And as for Matt Allen, this year's race was a success. Despite a broken rudder blade, he secured third place over the line. For him, a job well done. I think it was uh, an interesting challenge to be both Commodore and the skipper of a yacht. I enjoyed it immensely. I think we proved that it's possible to do it once again. And I think it really helps to see you know, the Commodore of the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia out there on the water. As the sun sets on the 2007 edition of the Rolex Sydney Hobart race, one thing's for sure. The glory belongs to Wild Oats 11 for the third year in a row.